Welcome to Nextstar TV. My name is Emily, and today's video is Microsoft Word 2010 User Guide Lesson 30, Proofing. In this video, I'll show you how to use proofing tools in Word 2010, like spelling and grammar, research, the source, and word count. Okay, so today I want to talk about proofing, and the first thing I want to cover is spelling and grammar. Word 2010 has a built-in dictionary and grammar guide that you can use to help point out questionable sentences in your document. Now the guide isn't sophisticated enough to be able to tell you if something is right or wrong necessarily, but rather it's able to point out areas that are worth you taking a second look at. So you can use your spelling and grammar tool in two ways. You can check out individual words and phrases, or you can check over your whole document. Now for individual phrases and words in your document, you'll notice a green or red wavy line under words and phrases that are questionable. Now the red wavy line indicates that the word or phrase isn't in words dictionary at all, and the green wavy line indicates that the word or phrase is in the dictionary, but is possibly being used in the wrong context. So to address one of these errors, you're going to right click the word, and the first thing that you'll notice at the top is a list of suggested corrections. So you can select one of these suggestions, or you have other options. You can click ignore, which will ignore this instance of the word, but you'll still be flagged if it shows up later in your document. You can click ignore all, which will ignore any instance of this throughout your document. You can add the word to your dictionary. Uh, you can choose autocorrect, so if this is a common misspelling for you, you can click your option and it will automatically be corrected throughout your document and in future documents. So in this particular instance, we're going to select can't because that was the word that we intended to use. So you see it's automatically been fixed in your document. Now if you have a grammar error or um, a context error with your green wavy line, again you're going to right click it. You'll see again at the top there's suggestions for change. You can also choose to ignore it once. Uh, you can click the grammar button, which will open your grammar dialog box and it'll give you some more options. You can either ignore it once or ignore this rule. Uh, you can change it or have um, the rule explained to you. You can click about this sentence which will give you more information about grammar rules. Or you can look up this word an instance on Bing. You can use your dictionary um, or some other research options. Now the other spelling and grammar option uh, is for your entire document. And So to do this you're going to go to the review tab and click spelling and grammar. And this will just run a spelling and grammar um, check of your whole document. So if you don't want to check into your grammar, you'll leave this box unchecked, but if you do, you can select it. And what this tool will do is it'll just bring you through your entire document, and it'll address every potential spelling and grammar error. So we can click Change, and you have these options, again, very similar to when you're doing it individually. You can ignore, um, you can change, you can explain, and you can actually make edits right in this box if you'd like. And you can just keep going through every instance until you have spell checked your entire document. Now you also have the option to change your proof settings. And this will allow you to have more control of what you're filtering in and out for your spell check. So to do this, you'll go to File, Options, and click Proofing. So the proofing area will allow you to set your spelling and grammar controls. So you can select and unselect things like ignore words in uppercase. Once you're satisfied with all your changes, you'll click OK, and your new settings will be applied to your document. The next thing I want to go over is research tools that Word has to offer. And these are just tools that will help you with the content of your document. So to review these various tools, you're going to go to Review, Research, and it'll pull up this dialog box. And to see the various research tools that Word has to offer, you'll click this drop down arrow and you'll see that you have an Encarta dictionary, an English assistance, you can use a thesaurus here, and then there's various research sites. Uh, Bing is just Microsoft's web search engine. Activia iWorks is a site that allows you to find business news. So all you'll do is type your search, select one of the research tools, and then click this green arrow to start searching. So another handy tool that is often used is the thesaurus. And the thesaurus will list synonyms and anonyms for words, which helps you diversify your word choices. So to use this tool, you'll right click a word, go down to synonyms, and you'll see a list of synonyms for the word, and then you can click the thesaurus button. 
it'll bring up this dialog box and this is the full thesaurus. So when you have the thesaurus tool pulled up, you'll see different meanings for the word and synonyms under each, and you can just scroll down and see all your different options. And you'll also notice that there's anonym options as well, and you can just highlight one of the words and pull the drop down arrow next to it, and you'll see that you have the option of inserting this word, copying, or looking up the word. Now you can also get to the thesaurus option by coming up to review and clicking thesaurus. The last tool I wanted to show you today was word count. And what the word count does, it's very self-explanatory. Um, if you come up to review and click word count, this tool will run various statistics for your document. It'll tell you how many pages, how many words, how many characters, with spaces or without spaces, how many paragraphs you have, and how many lines. And one other handy thing about the word count tool is you can highlight just a section of your document and it will give you the statistics for just that area. Thank you for joining Nextar TV for Microsoft Word 2010 User Guide Lesson 30 Proofing. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to visit www.nextar.tv for other tutorials or subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com/nextara.